Welcome to getting started with Zero Touch Node for Dynamo. To begin, we'll I'll fire up the Visual Studio 2013 and begin a new project. It'll be a class.NET project. And I'll go ahead and put it into a folder directory where I want to save the project. And I will just lab name it my test. I will go into the options to help uh, with the video to be able to see the code a little bit better, maybe make the text a little bit larger. Um, and then the next thing I'll do is get the package manager console, um, which is built into Visual Studios. And I'll install these two packages, which is um, the, the Zero Touch and, and the, the Dynamo library. Um, and you can do that. It's just a, a regular uh, DOS style. You just type it in. I just copied and pasted it in. Um, and it runs and automatically installs the package configuration um, for your packages of the Zero Touch node and, and your and your da Dynamo services. And it go it it adds the references to it. Um, I always like to make sure that they're not copied. Uh, setting these things to false. Now we can. I always like to rename my class one because it's just what it typically comes out of Visual Studios. Uh, I'll re relabel it something useful. Um, usually, the project that I'm working on or the program that I'm starting, uh, we'll just call it a Zero Touched Test, and I will set a couple of uh, field, um, and I'll just do an X, Y, and a Z field. I've noticed that a handful of developers use an underscore to set fields, um, but some of them just use regular. I like to do underscore, that way I know that it's a field. Um, in, in object oriented, you need to build a, um, a constructor for the project, and it usually is um, labeled the same as your class and it just builds your object um, I, you know when I first started learning this it was a little bit hard to wrap my mind around why you created something to create something that you've already made but that's just kind of how it works it it needs something to build before it builds its own object so I just set all my XYZ to, to it um, and then next thing I can do is I can set a public static um, as opposed to the internal which is basically just being seen by my my project um, and this this public will actually be seen by the uh, by dynamo and what I'll feed in is is the X Y and Z into the dynamo node um, and they'll be double um, and I'll need to get some using statements which are the namespace of the Autodesk uh, design script um, and there's a few of them that you need to add um, there's there's the one that we we need which is the geometry uh, to build geometry for for our project and with that we can continue on to build our line type so th this node that we're building for zero touch node is taking an XYZ coordinate uh, point or, or numbers um, and building points and then I will just build a second point from the the three the the XYZ coordinate and I will just add a little bit to it to get my second point so you can imagine this kind of being set or you can you can add a, 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 a more arguments so you can say x1 and x2 and and fill your second point but this is just for for testing just to kind of get get you understand how how to kind of build something from scratch and the next thing we need to do is build a line 
and since we're building it up we get the line from start to end and we put the first point and the second point and if if you do not um, dispose of of the two points um, Revit or Dynamo will start acting weird so you need to dispose of these two and send them to what's called a garbage collector something that that I guess in in Dynamo you you have to do um, you don't have to do it in in the Revit API but now we return our, our line um, relabel it here line uh, copy it and paste it in the in the return value uh, and will be this is this is our our dynamo node we're we're sending in xyz coordinate as as into or doubles um, and returning a, a line so we'll go ahead and uh, build our our project we'll build it Make sure there's no errors Looks like it went through pretty clean. And we'll start Revit. Open up a, a project for testing purposes. Work through this add in that I've built. Well, I didn't build it, but somebody did. I just use it. And we'll fire up Dynamo 1.2, which is the version I'm using. I'm sure that by the time you watch this video, there'll probably be newer versions. Um, and I'll go ahead and import the DLL, uh, which is in that folder that we saved it under, under um, debug and we can find our my test and the um, create line method that we that we built and we have our XYZ input that we added as our argument and obviously you can add more arguments you can put strings and things like that um, I like to set my my dynamo to manual that way it doesn't automatically run, but there, there's our line or curve um, in in Revit or in in Dynamo, and then from there you can obviously do more. Uh, all right, thank you for watching.